Hello, my name is George. I'm a Melbourne University graduate from 2008. And today, I'm here to talk to you about the Baja Board. Electric recreational vehicles have been booming in popularity for the last one or two years. I mean, just this past Christmas, we had that whole hoverboard craze. And CNBC reported that on Amazon and eBay, at its peak, we were selling one every 12 seconds. Now, some of the other big brands of electric skateboards include uh, Booster Board, and we've got Fit, and Evolve Skateboards. You suck! The problem with Boosted, Evolve, and Fit, as well as some other smaller brands, is that they're all designed for on-road use only. Now, secret, electric skateboards are not actually road legal in most cities around the world. Now what that means is you can only legitimately ride these boards on private property like farms, uh, some parklands, and uh, 4x4 trails and to an extent mountain bike parks. So the current riders of these boards either have to risk it with more, or, well, they can't ride in many places at all. The Baja board is the first board soon to be on the market to feature independent automotive style suspension and shock absorption, as well as independent four wheel drive. It is the only board designed to handle the punishment of the off road terrain. Now, we've actually done our own customer discovery process last year, interviewed 50 early adopters and surveyed 500 of our mailing list subscribers. And we know that the Baja board user is actually a middle aged man, 25 to 44. Uh, with a white collar or a skilled trades occupational background and who enjoys mountain bike riding, snowboarding and skateboarding. In 2014, we were named Best Alternative Vehicle at the Melbourne Electric Vehicle Expo. We were named by Gizmag as one of their best adventure gears of the year. We sold 50 trial units to early adopters for feedback. And just this past month, we're now negotiating a distribution agreement with a European partner for 1000 750 units over the next three years. And by the way, this is only based on the sale of boards. In our business model, we also generate revenue from spare parts and maintenance, from merchandise and protective gear, from events, and also from a future phone app which will help track the rider's metrics. Now, my co-founder James is a Swinburne University graduate and we've been there plenty of times talking to people about doing fun and work projects regarding riding dynamics, mechanics, battery life and the physiology of the rider and so forth. Why can't Melbourne University be involved in that? Why?